Welcome back. This is the firm. Motorola versus Apple in Germany, Apple versus Samsung in Korea, Interdigital versus Huawei in China, and Micromax versus Ericsson in India. A global war of sorts is playing out before courts and competition regulators on the issue of standard essential patents or SEPs. Now, SEPs are patents that are essential to implement a specific industry standard. Once these patents become industry standard, it becomes impossible for manufacturers to make gadgets such as smartphones or tablets without using that patented technology. This gives immense power to the owners of such patents to restrain manufacturers from using the technology if their terms are not agreed to. Recently, while deciding on the Samsung and Motorola cases, the European Commission gave much needed guidance in this area. Paiswini Bhatia gets you the outcome in Europe and its possible impact in India. But before that, let's look at what this battle is about. At the heart of the issue are the terms of the agreement between patent or technology owners and those who seek to implement the technology. Once SEP owners agree that their technology be made an industry standard, standard setting organizations or SSOs require them to license it on fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory terms. But what those terms should be has become a contentious issue between the two sides. The heart of the issue is uh, the um, need to strike a balance between uh, the patent holders who basically have a monopoly to be exercised on the technology that they have li uh, developed and the licensees who are utilizing that technology uh, and obviously have to pay some royalties on it. Uh, the, the, the question here is basically the amount of the royalties so there is dispute in the given instance uh, between Apple and, and Motorola and Samsung on the other side uh, on the amount of the royalties. Since Motorola and Apple could not agree to a mutually acceptable royalty rate, Motorola sought an injunction in Germany. Last month, the European Commission found Motorola guilty of abuse of dominant position. The Commission concluded so on two grounds. One, Motorola attempted to seek and enforce an injunction against Apple regarding one of its SEPs even though Apple was a willing licensee. I could just make one other point which is about the legal theory uh, underlying the Commission's decision because what this is effectively saying is that it is something approaching a crime or something for which a company could be fined a very great deal of money to approach a court and seek uh, discretionary relief and um, my my own view is this is a very odd thing for an uh, antitrust agency to do when the courts are fully able to assess the competition law and the intellectual property law uh, implications of seeking an injunction or indeed um, going to trial on validity and infringement or indeed the fair terms of the license so um, it, it, is, it is a peculiarly bold uh, intervention by an, an antitrust agency and in my own view one that is contrary to fundamental legal principles. The second ground on which the commission found Motorola guilty was its threat to use an injunction unless Apple gave up its future right to challenge the validity or infringement of Motorola's SEPs. The, the Commission's position now, and it, it's clearly adopted these decisions to be um, uh, precedent and guidance to the industry as it says, uh, the Commission's position is that the uh, licensee, or if you think of it the other way around, the infringer, uh, must be free to contest the validity of the patent. Um, and so the, the, posi the position will be that uh, the uh, extensive litigation you see going on in courts all over Europe and indeed, of course, the, the rest of the world um, will continue. Today, the decision by the Commission represents a, present, a precedent. Uh, Motorola has not been fined because there were no precedents in the past and, and the decision by the national courts have been uh, so far um, kind of conflicting. Uh, but now that the principle has been established, uh, obviously uh, an owner of standard essential patent has to be very careful 
if it wants to exercise uh, an enforcement through injunction because it, it may run the risk uh, that uh, it, it could be found uh, having a dominant position and in such case uh, the enforcement through injunction could be uh, found to be an abuse and, and there are very heavy sanctions in, in such case uh, up to 10 percent of the worldwide turnover of the group giving Motorola company in this investigation was another tech giant Samsung last month Samsung agreed to sign a legally binding commitment with the European Commission. The commitment requires Samsung to not seek injunctions against licensees who agree to two terms. One, a mandatory negotiation period of up to 12 months and two, if no agreement is reached, a determination of fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory terms by a court or an arbitrator. The core of, of the decision by the Commission today um, is exactly this. Um, it is legitimate for the holders of standard essential patents to act for the enforcement of their IP rights. But on the other hand, uh, if you have a dominant position, which is generally the case when, when you have uh, standard essential patents being recognized, uh, in such case, you cannot abuse of your powers, uh, of your dominant position, by um, taking action with injunctions against the licensee. So there is a balance that has to be um, uh, found between the right of the holder of a monopoly of the standard essential patents and uh, the licensees. For the licensees uh, to accept uh, a decision by a court or a decision by an arbitrator on the amount of the royalties should be sufficient to um, get into a situation of safe harbor. In saying so, the European Commission has laid down that SEP-based injunctions should only be available when there is an unwilling licensee, one who is not willing to take a license on fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory terms decided by a court or an arbitrator. Back home, the Competition Commission of India is facing a jurisdiction crisis. In February this year, the Delhi High Court restrained the Competition Commission of India from passing any orders in its ongoing investigations against Ericsson. Last year, Micromax and Intex had complained to the CCI that Ericsson was abusing its dominant position by demanding unfair, discriminatory and exorbitant royalty for its patents. The European cases will definitely have an impact on the way the Commission will proceed um, simply because the Indian Competition Act, like in Europe, uh, follows the approach that intellectual property rights must be recognized. But where the intellectual property right holders go beyond what is reasonably permitted by way of restrictions, competition regulators would frown upon that, especially when it comes to standard essential patents, where the patent holder has market power by virtue of being included in that standard. Therefore, I would foresee that the Indian regulator would take the approach that if you have a standard essential patent and you have a willing licensee, but you decide to pursue the route of injunctions or you, uh, uh, you impose terms which would be considered excessive, uh, then it would be frowned upon. But unlike the European regime that allows for settlements, the CCI will have to conclusively decide whether Ericsson abused its dominant position. But that will happen only if CCI manages to surmount the jurisdictional challenge. In Mumbai, Paisvini Upadhyay. All right, that was the competition double bill that we promised on this special episode of The Firm. But before I say goodbye, let me remind you to join us on the sixth episode of Companies Act, where we analyze the impact on board committees into corporate loans and investments, sticky area that, and sticky area this, related party transactions. I hope you continue to watch that series as well as this one. We'll see you next week. The problem is that SEBI has opened the doors to all sorts of promoters who should never have been permitted to list. And having permitted them now, they make these rules and regulations and the government does the same. 
the the problem is there you should never allow these people to take money from the public once you allow them there's no matter how many barn doors you try to slam shut the horse has bolted